Search Engine Optimization – Getting Your Site Ranked Higher in the Search Engines Introduction Search Engine Optimization, or SEO, is the process of optimizing your website so the search engines will rank it higher in their results when people are searching for the types of information that you offer. In other words, making your website appear to be more relevant for the topic than all your competitors' sites, at least in the eyes of the search engines. There's a ton of information out there about how to get your website ranked higher, and there are a ton of companies that offer these services as well. Some of those companies and some of the techniques are less ethical than others, with some being downright unethical. These companies use techniques that break the terms of use of the search engines as well as possibly doing things that cross legal lines. You want to avoid these so-called black hat techniques, whether you're working with an SEO company or doing all the work yourself. These methods will work in some cases, sometimes extremely well, but they're short-term strategies. Eventually the search engines are going to figure it out and they'll most likely de-index and even blacklist your website. Why put all the time and effort into something that could disappear on a moment's notice? In this report we're going to cover some of the most important things you can do when optimizing your website, all of which will fall into the white hat category of SEO. So let's dive in. Why do you need SEO? To people who aren't familiar with the concept, SEO sometimes seems a little bit unnatural. The idea of creating content and adding certain things to your website purely to rank higher in the search engine seems like an artificial process. Frankly, it can be done in an artificial way. If you focus purely on SEO from the search engine's point of view without considering the real visitors who are going to land on your website, it's not going to work out very well. Even if you get high rankings for your site, the people who arrive through the search engines aren't going to find much value, which means they're probably just going to leave anyway. Successful SEO marries the idea of optimizing for the search engines with providing value to the real visitors to your website. If you can combine the two effectively, there's nothing artificial about it at all, it's just good business sense. After all, if your website provides valuable content to your visitors, doesn't it make sense to do what you can to get those visitors on your site so that they can see it? You're helping them solve their problem, and you're actually helping the search engines as well, since their customers, which are the searchers, are finding what they want. That means they'll use that search engine again, since it obviously provides good results. And naturally, you win as well, since some of those visitors to your site will take whatever action it is you want them to take, clicking on an ad, opting into your email list, buying your product, etc. On-site versus off-site SEO. There are two main components to effective search engine optimization, on-site and off-site. On-site SEO includes everything you do on your own site to improve its optimization. Using keywords in your content, having a good keyword density, optimizing your HTML tags, links within your own site. Off-site SEO, on the other hand, includes everything you do outside of your own site to improve the optimization. Building backlinks. Yes, off-site SEO really comes down to one thing, backlinks. We'll cover it in more detail shortly, but first let's look at the on-site factors in more detail. Keywords. When you optimize your website, what you're really doing is optimizing each individual page on the site and doing so for specific keywords on each page. For example, let's say your website is about dog training. You might have pages on puppy training, dog training methods, and dog training collars, to name a few. Each page will have a specific keyword that you want to optimize for. The puppy training page will be targeting the keyword puppy training. The dog training methods page will be targeting the phrase dog training methods, and so on. On any given page, you want to rank as high as possible in the search engines when someone searches for that keyword. So if someone searches for puppy training, that page on your website would rank near or at the top of the results. These keywords can be identified using a tool like the Google Keyword Tool or other applications like Micro Niche Finder or Market Samurai. You should always be working from a keyword list when you're optimizing your website, otherwise you may be targeting keywords that nobody's actually searching for. For instance, if you have a page on your website about your company's brand of dog training collars, optimizing for that specific keyword, say XYZ training collar, may not be very effective if nobody ever searches for it. Once you know what keywords you want to optimize for, you should start creating pages on your website for each of them, each optimized for different phrases. Some pages might be able to target more than one keyword phrase, mind you. You might have keywords like dog training collar and most effective dog training collar, for example. 
If you optimize a page for most effective dog training collar, it encompasses the other keyword as well, so when you optimize for the one, you're automatically optimizing for the other. The first thing you should do to optimize your content is to include the keyword itself. You don't want to overdo it and use it too many times, which is known as keyword stuffing, but you should use it a few times. It's a good idea to target a 1% to 2% keyword density, meaning for every 100 words on the page, your keyword should be used once or twice. HTML tags. Another important place to use your keywords is in the HTML tags on your page. This includes tags like the title tag, meta tags, h1, h2, h3 tags, and so on. The title tag is the most important of them all, so make sure you use your keyword once in the title tag as close to the beginning as you can. You should also include the keyword in the meta description and keywords tags. These aren't particularly important, nothing like they used to be, but they can still have a very small impact. It doesn't really take much effort to include them, so it's a good idea to do so. When you write your meta description tag, there's another important thing to remember. Most of the search engines, Google in particular, often use this tag as the description in the search results. So you want to write a description that makes sense to a real visitor and preferably write it with a good call to action that will convince the searcher to choose your site out of the list of results. If you have a good description, you can sometimes get more clicks at position 2 or 3 than the site in the first position if its description isn't as effective. The other tags that should include your keyword if possible are the H1 tag and possibly H2 and H3 if it doesn't push your keyword density too high, and the image alt tags. If you're building your website in a tool like Dreamweaver, you can manage these tags manually as you design each page. If you're using WordPress or some other type of CMS or content management system, they most likely have a plugin that will handle this for you, such as the all-in-one SEO plugin for WordPress. Links within your own site. We're going to discuss backlinks in just a moment, but backlinks don't all have to come from other sites. You can also link between pages on your own site, and those count as backlinks as well. You don't want to overdo this. Linking to every other page on your site from each page isn't going to be very effective. The proper way to approach insight linking is to link to other related articles, either within the content of the page itself or in a related links list at the bottom. This helps with SEO because the links are highly targeted, and it also helps your human visitors by giving them links to other pages they might find useful. Offsite SEO. Offsite SEO really comes down to one thing backlinks. That is, links pointing to your website from other sites on the internet. Google was the first search engine to count these links as a factor in how they rank websites, but all the large search engines use links as a factor these days. The idea is, the more links you have pointing to your site, the more popular it is, and therefore the content must be useful. Of course, Google's original algorithm assumed that these links were appearing because other people thought your content was good enough to link to. Building your own links kind of circumvents that assumption, but it's a necessary part of SEO. Hopefully the content in your website is good enough that other people will link to it as well, so over time you'll have a mix of links that you've built and links that have appeared naturally. Link sources. There are a lot of ways you can build links to your website. Some are easier than others, and some might even cost some money. But there are several methods that have worked quite well for years now and will most likely continue to do so, provided you do them correctly. Article marketing. Article marketing is probably one of the most widely used link building strategies simply because it's relatively easy and it doesn't have to cost anything. You submit articles to sites like ezinearticles.com and goarticles.com, and in exchange for the free content, they let you include a resource box at the end of your article with links back to your website. Over the last few years, there have been a lot of so-called systems that have recommended writing short, low-quality articles in large numbers to generate a lot of links back to your site. This strategy doesn't work very well any longer after Google's recent updates. But article marketing itself still works fine. You just need to make sure the articles you submit are high quality, with enough length to actually provide a good amount of information, usually 500 words or more. It takes more work, but frankly, taking shortcuts isn't a long-term strategy anyway. You're much better off to submit one 500-word article that will be live on the internet for years to come than to submit three or four 200 to 250-word articles that might get removed if there's another shakeup with Google. Always think long-term when doing your link building. Social media. Social media sites like Twitter and Facebook have really taken off over the last two or three years. 
These have become powerful sources of backlinks, particularly if a lot of people are talking about your site and linking to it. You can seed this viral process through your own account, but when it comes to social media, you need to be providing some real value in the content on your site. People won't share junk, and the search engines know it. That's one of the reasons they're putting more and more weight on these social sites. If lots of people are sharing something, it probably means it's worth sharing, so by extension it's worth having a higher ranking in the search results. At the moment, Facebook and Twitter are the two most powerful social media sites, but this is an area that can change pretty quickly. MySpace is a good example. Until Facebook came on the scene, MySpace was the 800-pound gorilla, and now hardly anybody ever mentions them anymore. Keep an eye out for new up-and-coming social media sites. If you see one that seems to be getting some traction, like Google Plus is at the moment, get yourself signed up for a profile and become active there as well. The sooner you get started, the better, since you'll have an established presence when the majority of people start signing up. Social bookmarking. Social bookmarking is another way to generate backlinks to your websites. It's similar to social media in some ways, but it's not quite as effective. The best way to use social bookmarking is to create some buzz for new posts on your site. Until your site builds some authority with the search engines, it can take a little while for new content to get indexed. Creating some social bookmarks pointing back to your site can be a good way to get content indexed faster, and getting indexed is the first step to getting ranked. Free hosting. There are lots of places that you can get free hosting, such as blogger.com, wordpress.com, and squidoo.com. You're not building your own websites on your own domains in these places. Instead, you're leveraging their authority in the search engines for backlinks to your site. You can build pages or websites or lenses on these type of sites that include links back to your own websites. Some of them, like squidoo.com, will even let you include an RSS feed, so every time you post something new on your site, those other pages get updated with the new links. It's never a good idea to use free hosting for your money site, the one that ultimately makes you money but they're perfect for building links back to those sites. Some of the most effective free hosts include WordPress.com, Blogger.com, Squidoo.com, Scribed.com, and DevHub.com. Link exchanges. Link exchanges are considered old school with most internet marketers. These were originally direct swaps of links, usually found on a recommended links page or something similar. You would post a link to another site on that page, and the other site would post a link to yours on their links page. These type of link exchanges stopped being effective years ago, but that doesn't mean that link exchanges don't work anymore. You just have to be smart about it. You might swap content with another site, so you post their article on your site along with a resource box link, and they do the same for you. Or you can do a three or four way link swap. You link to site number 2, site number 2 links on to site number 3, and then site number 3 links back to you. Blog commenting. Blog commenting can also be a very effective way to generate backlinks, plus if you do it effectively you can even generate some direct traffic back to your website. The idea is to comment on other blogs in the same market as you and include a link back to your website from there. If you comment on popular blogs, you can wind up with a valuable link down the road a bit since the pages on that site could wind up with really good page rank. It's important not to comment spam, however. Don't just leave useless comments like, wow, great post, and read the blog post and add value with your comment. If you focus on a handful of blogs and comment regularly, it can also be a good way to get noticed by the higher profile bloggers in your market. And if you write insightful posts on your own blog, they might even drop by and comment on yours every once in a while. The link in your blog comment can come in a couple of ways. When you leave a comment, most blog platforms ask for your name and a website URL. When the comment goes live, your name will be hyperlinked to the URL that you enter. Some people recommend using keywords as your name to get good anchor text links in your comments, but I don't agree. How likely is your comment to get approved when it's coming from someone named Dog Training Methods? Most bloggers will just delete those type of comments. Even if you use your own name, you're still getting a link to your site. And if you really want to get your keywords in there, try something like Jong the Dog Training Guy Smith. Some bloggers will still delete this, but it's got a better chance of approval at least. The other way you can get backlinks through blog commenting is through a WordPress plugin called Comment Love. Any blogs that use this plugin will add a link to the most recent post on your site to the end of your comment, assuming your website is a blog as well. 
Sites that use this plugin are obviously aware of the value of a backlink, so they're often good sites to target since they're more likely to accept your comment, assuming it adds value, of course. Paid links. Another way to get backlinks is to pay for them. There are services like textlinkads.com and textlinkbrokers.com that sell links on behalf of other websites. You can choose the page rank of the page your link is on, and in some cases you can even buy site-wide links, putting a link to your website on every page of their site. These links can cost quite a bit, particularly when the link is on a higher page rank page, so whether or not it's a good investment will depend on your budget and how well you can monetize your visitors. And keep in mind that the search engines don't like paid links, at least paid links that aren't labeled clearly as such. If they identify a link as being paid, they might discount it anyway, resulting in little or no value being passed. Another option for paid links is to set up private deals yourself. If you find a website that's ranking well and has some pages with decent page rank, you can always contact the webmaster directly to see if they'd be interested in selling you a link on their site. These type of arrangements are a lot harder for the search engines to identify, so they can be worth the extra work. Conclusion We've covered some of the basics of search engine optimization in this video. On-site optimization, building backlinks, and backlinking strategies and sources. If you implement what you've learned here, you'll have better SEO than many of your competitors and will be able to outrank many of them with relatively little effort. And as you get more experience, you'll be able to expand on what's working for you and possibly even outsource some of the work so you're not spending all your time on SEO. Should you automate your backlinking strategy? Automation is one of the things that most internet marketers are looking for. If you can automate a task, particularly a repetitive, time-consuming one, it can free up your time for other things. In this article, we're going to look at some of the pros and cons of automating your backlink building. There are a number of ways to automate your backlinks, some totally automated and others just partially so. Article submission services or applications, blog commenting applications, blog network posting, and automated link exchanges. By automating these things, you can generate backlinks on an ongoing basis without having to constantly go searching for new places to link from. The biggest drawback to these automated services is the fact that they tend to generate links from places that aren't necessarily all that valuable. Take blog networks for example. There are a number of services, both free and paid, that have a number of blogs where you can post with backlinks to your site. Some of them will take one article you submit and post it to multiple sites, sometimes even spinning the article in the process. But many of the sites it gets posted to may have little or no value. They're often set up purely to accept these free articles and they have no page rank and may not even be fully indexed in the search engines. Those type of links really don't give you much value. In most cases you can choose any two of these three things. Low cost, easy, and high quality. High quality links that are easy to build will cost you more money. Easy to build links that don't cost much won't be very high quality and high quality links that don't cost much will be harder to build. Automated backlink building is often best used as one part of a larger strategy. You should continue building higher quality backlinks even though they take more time and effort and use the automated services to supplement those links. You can even use the automated backlinking methods to build links to the pages where you're manually building links. For example, if you use article marketing as one backlinking strategy, use the automated systems to build links to your articles once they go live on the article directories. This will help increase the value of the links that point from your articles back to your own website. SEO versus conversions. Search engine optimization, or SEO, is all about getting your site ranked higher in the search engines, especially Google. There are various strategies that can help you rank higher, both on-site and off-site. But no matter how high your site ranks and how much traffic you get from the search engines, you're going to need to convert those visitors if you want to generate any revenue with your site. And by convert those visitors, we mean convince them to take whatever action it is you want them to take. Clicking on an ad, signing up for your email list, liking your page on Facebook, or buying your product, and so on. You need to balance the need for SEO against the conversion rate of your page to be successful. That means optimizing the visitor experience as well as the SEO of your pages. Don't overuse keywords on your page to the point of making it unreadable for real visitors. 
Keyword stuffing is one of the most common mistakes people make, and frankly, it isn't necessary anyway. Years ago, when the search engines were still relatively new, whatever site used a keyword the most times often ranked the highest, but those days are long gone. It's also a good idea to include things that make your site more sticky, like video and audio content. A sticky site simply means your visitors stay longer, and these types of content will help. The search engines can identify when someone clicks on your site and then goes back and clicks on a different one. If that happens too much, it's quite likely that it will impact your ranking, and not in a good way. So adding things that keep people engaged can ultimately help both your conversions and your SEO. You can also look at the conversion process as a multi-step strategy. The page that your visitors land on when they click on your site in the search results could be the first step in the process, perhaps convincing them to opt into your email list or click through to another page on your site. Once you get them beyond the initial page, you can focus much more on the conversion aspect and less on SEO, since it doesn't matter how high those pages rank or if they do at all. The only page that needs to rank highly is the landing page they hit when they first click through. Is Google the only search engine that matters? When people talk about SEO and natural search traffic, they're generally referring to Google. It gets the largest percentage of search traffic out of the major search engines, but should you focus purely on Google or spread your efforts out across all the different search engines? Google has held roughly 65% of the overall market share for search pretty consistently for the last year or more. Yahoo and Bing, the two main competitors, are both under 20%. On the surface, this would indicate that you should focus on Google for your search traffic. Those numbers don't tell the whole story, however. The search market share can vary from one market to another. It's not a hard and fast rule, but in general, Google tends to be used by searchers who are more tech-savvy. So in markets that have more technical users, Google's market share can be high, even higher than the overall numbers. But in less technical markets, Bing and Yahoo often have higher shares than they do overall. This is particularly true for Bing because it's the default search engine for Windows users. There are a lot of people who just use whatever is included by default, so they use Bing. Another factor that you should consider is that putting all your eggs in one basket is never a good idea. Google is notoriously fickle when it comes to changing things, and even if your site is ranking well today, there's no guarantee it will continue. One little change in Google's algorithm could cause your rankings to plunge. If you focus on Bing and Yahoo, to some degree at least, you'll have alternative sources of traffic if that ever happens. It's also important to consider some of the changes that have happened on the internet over the last couple of years. Sites like Facebook and Twitter have become extremely popular and many people spend a large percentage of their time on them, particularly on Facebook. While these sites aren't search engines, they can still be very effective for driving traffic to your websites. And because they're harder to game due to their social nature, they're being used as a ranking factor by the search engines. By focusing some of your efforts on these sites, you can get the benefits in Google and other search engines while still diversifying your traffic strategy somewhat. Is article spinning an effective SEO strategy? Article spinning is the process of rewriting an article on a large scale. You go through your seed article and mark it up with synonyms and rewritten sentences, then the spinner software generates any number of unique versions of, from that seed article. This process has been around for several years, but it has improved considerably over that time. There are still two camps, however, people who think it works great and people who hate it. In this article, we're going to look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of article spinning. The main reason people like article spinning is because it makes it possible to generate dozens or even hundreds of somewhat unique articles from a single seed article. How effective and how unique those spins are really comes down to how much time and effort you put into creating the seed article in the first place. If you use an article spinner application that automates the process, you'll tend to get mediocre results. If you spin your seed article manually, on the other hand, and really put some effort into creating multiple versions that are all readable when spun, you can get articles that are all quite unique and still perfectly acceptable quality. Let's say it takes you two hours to do a really thorough spin on a 400-word article. That means you create multiple versions of sentences as well as individual words and nest them effectively so when you generate a spun version there are enough options that it can be quite unique. You might think that two hours is a lot of time to spend on it, but the fact is you can probably generate several dozen really unique articles from that one seed. 
How long would it take you to write or even rewrite that many articles? Once you have those unique spins, you can use them for various things. Posting on sites like Squidoo and Hubpages, submitting to second-tier article directories, posting to blog networks, or sending out through article submission services or software. These will all create multiple backlinks to your website, all from a single seed article. If you do this on a regular basis, even once or twice a month, you can have enough content to generate new backlinks to your site for quite some time. How to optimize WordPress for the best SEO results. WordPress is a popular platform for building websites because it makes the process so easy. WordPress handles all the formatting and layout of your site so you can focus on the content. But the default setup isn't very well optimized for the search engines. In this article, we're going to discuss some ways to improve the SEO on your WordPress-based sites. Privacy settings. The first thing you should do is check the privacy settings in the WordPress admin dashboard. You can choose whether or not to make the site visible to the search engines. If the wrong option is set, your site won't be indexed or ranked. The default setting is to make the site visible to the search engines, but it's still a good idea to double check. If this isn't set right, nothing else we're going to cover will matter. Permalinks. The next change you should make is to the permalink structure. By default, WordPress uses a pretty unfriendly URL structure. Your posts and pages will show up as something like www.mydomain.com slash question mark ID equals and then some number. There's no keywords included in the URL and there's some debate about how effective the search engines are at even indexing sites with these type of URLs. Instead, you should change the permalink structure to include keywords. You can make this change in the permalink setting page and set it to something like what's shown on the screen here. This will use the title of your post as the URL for the page. For example, if your post title is My First Post, the URL would be mydomain.com slash myfirstpost. This will ensure that you get the keywords in your URL, assuming that you use them in the post title. SEO Plugins Another important step to improving the SEO on your site is installing an SEO WordPress plugin. There are several of them available, but the most commonly used plugin is called All-in-One SEO. This plugin will optimize the HTML tags on each page, title tag, meta tags, and so on, using the post title and the content of the post itself. You can override these settings manually if you want to really optimize each page, but even the default settings are a huge improvement over the default setup for WordPress. And take note, some premium themes, such as Thesis, have SEO features built into them. If you're using one of these themes, there's no need to install a plugin. In fact, doing so can cause conflicts between the theme SEO and the plugin SEO, so you're better to leave it up to the theme in this case. How to maximize SEO without turning away human visitors. SEO is all about the search engines, structuring your pages and links to get the most value in the eyes of the search engine algorithms. But getting high rankings is only half the process. Once you get ranked, it's real humans who visit your site. If you over-optimize your site, you can wind up with something that doesn't really help those visitors. In this article, we're going to look at some ways that you can accomplish both. The first thing to remember is that ultimately your site needs to be valuable to human visitors. The search engine spiders aren't going to make you any money, real people are. That means you need to be sure that the content is useful to the people who land on your site. If your pages are stuffed full of keywords and the content is barely readable, people aren't going to stick around for very long. They'll just go back and find another site that provides more value. Always write with real visitors in mind. Yes, you should optimize your pages for their primary keywords, but never at the expense of readability. Generally, you don't want to go any higher than 2% keyword density. That means you should use your keyword no more than twice for every 100 words of content, and maybe only once. Another factor in convincing people to visit your site is your title and meta description tags. The title tag is one of the most powerful parts of your page as far as SEO is concerned, so you definitely want to include your keyword in it. But most of the search engines also use that title tag as the title of your page in the search results and they often use the meta description tag as the snippet of content that gets displayed in the search results. So make sure your title and description have a good call to action to convince searchers to click through. 
If your title and description tags are well written, you can often get more clicks in the second or third position in the search results than a site ranked at number one but with a poor title and or description tag. And getting more clicks in the search results could ultimately help your site outrank the top results since it's quite possible that the search engine algorithms take this factor into account. How to make the most of your article marketing. Article marketing is a great way to build backlinks, but simply submitting articles to the directories and sitting back waiting for the traffic to start flowing doesn't work like it used to. In this article, we're going to look at some strategies for maximizing your results from article marketing. First, the landscape of article marketing has changed quite a bit over the last few months. Google's Panda update hit most of the article directories pretty hard and they've really clamped down on their quality requirements as a result. 250 to 300 word articles that are really just reworked content from other places just won't cut it anymore. You need to write longer articles, 500 plus words, and they need to be just as high quality as what you would put on your own websites. This goes beyond the minimum requirements for most article directories, but look at it this way. You could get by with the bare minimum, but if Google does another big update that spooks the article sites into tightening their requirements even further, those bare minimum articles might suddenly be not good enough and get removed from the site. Wouldn't you rather put a little extra effort into writing articles that will stand the test of time? Another way to get more out of your articles is to build backlinks to your articles once they go live on the article directories. Most people just submit an article and move on to the next one, so if you're building links to those articles, you're going to outrank most of your competitors. And the backlinks that you include in those articles will be more powerful since the article will be getting some backlink juice as well. That extra link juice will trickle down to your own website over time. And finally, treat your articles as a source of direct traffic as well as a source of backlinks. Include a good call to action in your resource box to get people to click through to your website. You'll still get links to your website, but you'll also get some direct traffic from people who find your articles on the article sites. This direct traffic can come pretty quickly too, so it can help get your site moving while you wait for the links to have an effect on your rankings in Google and the other search engines. Getting the most SEO bang for your buck from your content. There's a common saying in internet marketing, content is king. This means that good content is ultimately the most important thing since without it you're going to be hard pressed to convince your visitors to take whatever action it is you want them to take once they reach your site. In this article we're going to look at some ways that you can get more leverage from your content. Let's face it, creating content can be challenging. Whether you're writing articles, making videos, designing images, or creating any other type of content, you're probably going to be faced with writer's block at some point or another. One way to minimize this problem is to get more mileage out of the content you already have. There are a number of ways you can do this. Repurposing content. One of the most effective ways to stretch your content is to repurpose it into different formats. If you have an article on your website, you could record an audio version or create a video with a PowerPoint presentation. The content's the same, but because you have multiple formats, you can post them in different places such as YouTube or iTunes to get more exposure. These repurposed versions can also link back to your website, which can help with SEO as well. Rewriting content. If you use article marketing or free hosting as a backlink strategy, you have to write even more content. Rewriting content that you've already created is a good way to simplify this process. It still takes some time and effort, but because you're not having to come up with completely new ideas for content, it can be a lot easier. This is especially true if you're working in a niche that you're not necessarily all that familiar with yourself. Spinning content. Article spinners will take a seed article and spin it into multiple versions. This is similar to rewriting an article, but you can generate any number of versions this way. Spinning has a bit of a mixed reputation. Some people swear by it and some others swear at it. But the fact is, it works well if you take the time to create a good seed article. It can take some work to generate a seed article that creates readable spins, but if you do it right, you can generate dozens of unique articles from that one seed, saving a lot of time and effort in the process. 5 Free Sources of Backlinks Backlinks are probably one of the most critical components of SEO. In fact, if you did absolutely no on-site SEO and just built backlinks to your site, you could outrank sites that have perfect on-page optimization. 
In this article, we're going to look at five free sources of backlinks. Article marketing. Article marketing is probably one of the most widely used backlink methods for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's easy. Almost anyone can write an article. And number two, it's cheap or free in most cases. You write an article and submit it to one or more article directories. In exchange for the free content you're giving them, the directory allows you to include a resource box at the end of the article. You can include one or more links in that resource box that point back to your website. Blog commenting. Most blogging platforms such as WordPress and Blogger let you enter a URL when you leave a comment on a post. Your name generally gets linked to that URL, so every time you leave a comment, you create a link back to your website. The secret to building links this way is to leave valuable comments, not just useless things like, hey, great post. Social bookmarking. Social bookmarking on sites like delicious.com and clipmarks.com let you add bookmarks to your favorite web pages so you can come back to them later. But those bookmarks also create backlinks from the bookmarking site to yours, so this is a good way to generate more backlinks. Free hosting. Free hosting sites like WordPress.com and Squidoo.com let you build pages about virtually any topic. You can build pages on these sites about the same topic as your own website and then include links back to your site within the content. Some of them, like Squidoo for example, will even let you add an RSS feed to your page. If your website is running on a blog platform like WordPress, you can add the feed to your Squidoo page so it gets updated every time you post a new article on your site and that update will include a new backlink. Social media. Social media sites like Twitter and Facebook are also very effective ways to get backlinks. Whenever you post an update to one of those sites with a link to your website, that update will get picked up by Google and the other search engines, resulting in another backlink to your website. Three top SEO software tools. There are a number of software tools that can help you improve your SEO. Some of these tools run on your computer and others are services that you can access through the internet itself. In this article, we're going to look at three tools that will help you improve your SEO. Micro Niche Finder. Keyword research is the first step to any successful SEO campaign. You need to know what keywords people are searching for and you should also determine the amount of competition so you know what you're up against. If you don't do this step properly, everything else you do for SEO may be wasted effort since you could be targeting keywords that nobody is even searching for. One of the most effective tools for keyword research is a program called Micro Niche Finder. It will generate a list of keywords related to whatever seed keyword you give it, and it can tell you how much competition there is in Google as well as how strong that competition is. It automates the entire process, saving you hours compared to doing the same research manually. Market Samurai. Market Samurai will also generate a keyword list and analyze the competition for you, but it does a number of other things as well. It will identify sites where you can get backlinks, how many backlinks you'll need to outrank the top results, topics on which to write articles for your site, and much more. And Market Samurai has another advantage over Micro Niche Finder. It will run on any platform. Micro Niche Finder is a Windows application, but Market Samurai will run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. SERP IQ. SERP IQ is a web-based service that will help you identify the best keywords to target as well as analyze your competition. It generates detailed reports about the top 10 results for your keyword that includes information such as the page rank, the number of backlinks, and the domain age. It also tells you if the exact match domains are available so you can quickly identify domains if you're in the early stages of your research. Any of these applications will help automate a lot of the work that goes into researching good keywords for your site. They can save you a lot of time, so they're worth the cost when you consider how much your time is worth. If you can't justify the cost right away, plan to invest some of your earnings into one of them as soon as your site starts generating revenue.